We don't have to have a population where 40% of us die of heart attacks and 10% die of strokes and 35% die of cancer. In Washington, we're looking for ways to pay for health care and not realizing it's not a matter of who pays for it. If we want to solve the health care crisis, we're not going to solve it by figuring out who's going to pay for more health care when more health care isn't the answer. More health care is the problem. 45% of Medicare today is cardiology. And you asked yourself, well, what are those expenses for? They are for drugs, procedures such as stents and bypasses and all the uh, imaging. As we understand the causation of heart disease, it's not because of a lack of these drugs, it's not because of a lack of these procedures. It's because of Western malnutrition. We spend twice as much money on healthcare in this country than any other modern country and have the worst health to show for it. If you plot the amount of money spent on medicines in any country around the world, you'll find that the more money spent on medications, the worse the healthy life expectancy. And the word healthy life expectancy means the quality of your life in the last 20 years of your life. When we turn to medicine as our first treatment, we get iatrogenic illnesses and deaths. A person is injured or killed by the medication that was prescribed by the doctor. Every HMO, every doctor's office, every hospital should be required when they're writing out a prescription to think, is there a non-medical approach that might be more effective, a non-pharmaceutical approach that might work better and mean that we don't have to go to this expense and put the patient at risk. If you were a cardiac surgeon and you decided you were going to hang out your shingle in rural China, or perhaps the Papua Highlanders in New Guinea, Central Africa, or the Tarahumara Indians in northern Mexico. Forget it. You better plan on selling pencils. They just don't have cardiovascular disease there. And the common denominator is that these are plant-based cultures. That is, they are not eating animal products, they're not eating oils, dairy, or anything with a mother or a face. The longest of societies have always eaten a diet style with less than 10% of calories from animal products the American diet is more than 60% of calories from processed foods. And processed foods don't contain antioxidants and phytochemicals, though they've been lost in processing. Animal products also do not contain a significant amount of antioxidants or phytochemicals. If we're not going to get them from animal products, and we're not going to get them from processed foods, where are we getting them from? 27% of the American diet today is animal products. With the 60% of the processed foods added onto that, that leaves less than 10% of calories left over for unrefined plant foods. The amount of protein that we really need is that which is provided by whole plant-based foods. A lot of people tend to think that protein only comes from animal-based foods. That was a thought for a long time. That's mythology. These myths propagated by the government were fueled by the lobbyists and the interests of the meat industry and dairy industry. It wasn't based on science. The USDA is run by the dairy industry, the Cattlemen's Association, the pork industry. It ends up with a food pyramid that is carrying uh, food products which will literally guarantee that millions of Americans will continue to perish. Many authorities feel that part of the obesity epidemic today is not only what we eat, but what we're drinking. If you will look at the size of a Coca-Cola 40 or 50 years ago, now uh, you don't feel like you're getting a Coke unless you get a bottle of several liters. And also by having foods, particularly vegetarian foods, that don't cause the oxidative stress that meat does. The size of the meals we eat in the West are double or treble the size of what would be considered a healthy proportion when you stop damaging the body with these improper foods, add some basic fuel that it needs to run properly, it naturally heals. And as a result, people get well. When you start feeding people a starch-based diet with the addition of fruits and vegetables, which happens to be a vegan diet, then what happens is the body has a chance to recover. It just taps in on its natural ability to heal itself. When your diet is higher in plant foods, you're getting exposed to antioxidants and phytochemicals. It's an anti-inflammatory diet. The word anti-inflammatory means it decreases the production of free radicals. And the free radical production is linked to the oxidative stress of the cell determining how fast you're going to age. We're talking here about promoting longevity. It's a time of reckoning. You know, let's start telling the truth. Let's start thinking about other things besides profits. I mean, let's have a revolution. You know, let's get the population, the public, and by the way, maybe doctors and dietitians to stand up and tell the truth. The reason people are sick is because of the foods they eat. And the foods that you folks make are the foods that are making people sick. 
the for-profit corporate influence is severe. It operates at the policy level. And when I say the corporate influence, I don't mean to focus on one group of individuals in one sector of society because the corporate influence is essentially all of us in many cases. Industry will sell us what we want to buy. Most of the conditions we're dealing with today, whether it's diabetes or high blood pressure or cancer, high cholesterol levels, these are things where there isn't a single pill that's going to solve the problem. We put a person on pills not for two weeks to knock out a pneumonia. We put them on drugs for life to control their cholesterol and control their blood pressure. And it's a gold mine for the drug industry and a rather poor bargain for the patient. Suppose I see a patient, he or she is, let's say, 245 pounds. Obviously, they're obese. They happen to have type 2 diabetes. They happen to have hypertension. And they've had a heart attack. But they get it. They begin to eat plant-based to reverse their disease. And a year, year and a half later, they're no longer obese. They are no longer diabetic. They no longer have high blood pressure. The risk for a further cardiac event is essentially eliminated. The same for stroke. There is not a pill in the planet that can possibly do that. And that's achieved through a patient's awareness of how powerful their behavior can be to restore their health. I've had a lot of people ask me about juicing. Well, to give you a whole idea on how to juice, I've come to one of the more popular health food stores in New York City, Whole Foods. And I'm going to show you eight and give you some really nice recipes for summer or winter or fall or spring. First, just a few basics. When you see people shopping in here and you see people buying juices, I'm always interested in what brought you to this place in life. We're going to go from here up to Harlem, and I'm going to show you up in Harlem on 125th Street in a different socioeconomic environment, how one of the most single popular stores in all of Harlem is selling juices. I'm at the epicenter of fast foods in New York in the Harlem community. I'm in Harlem at 125th Street, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taco Bell. Straight ahead is McDonald's. Of course, the New York subway, which you're going to be hearing throughout these interviews right behind me. I want to talk with people who are eating here on a regular basis and ask them, why are they eating here? Is it the taste of the food? Do they understand the health consequences of eating a diet high in saturated fats, simple sugars, french fries, hamburgers, hot dogs? And is this something to do occasionally or is this regularly? And what message as an adult does this give to their children, especially with the high incidence of disease in the African-American Latino community and children? Let's talk with them now. I come from a background which my mother, I'm Spanish, my mother uh, showed us how to eat right. We grew our own food and our neighbors, we would exchange foods and whatnot. Now I caught into the bad habit of eating fast food, fast foods, and I want to get into like a diet program. You grew up in Puerto Rico, right? Correct. A lot of Puerto Ricans in the actual diet is extremely healthy, mm -hmm. but something happens between the diet in Puerto Rico or in many of the Caribbean countries and then when they come to the United States. What was your diet like growing up? The sea is right there. So we had all this involvement, but now when we come here in New York, it's not as easy. You can't, you don't have a backyard, you're not going to grow those fruits. You believe that one of the reasons Americans are overweight is because they're eating too much of the fast foods? Yeah. Here you have to seek it. Seek to eat right or else you'll get distracted with all these fast foods and stuff we have out here. Native Puerto Ricans, and this is also true of most of Central and South American countries, the older generation much healthier than the younger generation because they didn't have the fast foods. And now he's taking a step towards getting his weight back. Again, 220 pounds, ideal 175. A person who knows what he's going to do and is now going to commit himself to doing it. Pedro, now, what are you eating at McDonald's? Well, what I usually do, I come in the morning and I just uh, have a cup of coffee, but I don't, I don't try not to eat uh, like a burger thing. I usually eat healthy food at home. Oh, you do? Yeah, so I eat my like, like English muffin and uh, a decaf, 
and then I go home and eat healthy food. I don't eat too much burger. You don't eat the burgers? No, because like they say that meat is not good for you, so I guess I, I try to stay away from it. Right. My cholesterol was kind of high, and I take some pill, so I so lower my cholesterol. I stay away from that fatty food, definitely. Good. I use like McDonald's coffee. Decaf is very good. <laughs> Denise, what's in the bag? Show and tell. McDonald's, a pancake. Oh, a pancake. Who's that for? Myself. Now, why, why do you want that pancake? Because it's good. McDonald's is good. <laughs> it's good. Now, you're looking at, you're telling us the truth here. <laughs> yeah. Now, what, what all are you eating? What's in there? Um, McDonald's hash brown, cookies. Cookies are good Sausage, for you. eggs. Sausage is good for you. That's my snack. The cookies. Right. At the orange yeah. juice. We won't forget the orange oh, juice. Oh, okay. Now we threw one little good thing in there, right? So you know good foods. Yes. But you're not always eating good foods. No. Why no. not? I don't know. <laughs> there may be a desire to change, but there's not the incentive and passion to do it. I guess not enough. What would it take to be more consistent in being healthy, making healthier choices? More consistent? I guess just thinking healthy. If you think healthy and you know you want to live longer, you would do it. Somewhere in all this, there's a missing link. And I'd like to talk with people now who have found the missing link. The missing link that will allow them to exercise regularly, eat right, exclude the fast foods, and see the results. There are little oases of health food establishments like this place. And because of how busy it is, it does show that there is there's a demand for it. People are conscious of it. It's just that it hasn't permeated to the rest of society. I believe it can make an enormous difference in lowering the incidence of hypertension, diabetes, congestive heart failure, arthritis, dementia, depression. And it's worth the effort. And what brings you into the juice bar? Well, the food that they sell. Um, I'm not into eating a lot of meat, and I appreciate the fact that they don't sell a lot of meat here. And I like the salads and uh, all the different varieties of meatless foods that they offer you. Being a asthmatic and a diabetic, I can appreciate that. You know? Have you seen a difference in your asthma or diabetes when you eat this way? Oh yeah, very much so, very much so. What do you find congests you as far as uh, being an asthmatic? Well, ice cream, uh, dairy products white flower parts, things of that sort, of donuts, cakes, and ice cream. Um, red meats, which I have excluded from my diet altogether. So, so when you give up the red meats, dairy products, the ice cream, and wheat products, you can breathe better? Yes. yes. Did your doctors tell you this, or did you find this out on your own? Doctors don't, don't agree with that. They seem to want to push the pills at you all the time. So in other words, they say it's just, it's something medical and the diet yes. doesn't matter? Yes. They you don't. found out they didn't know what they were talking yes, about? Yes, I did. I surely did. And has it also affected your energy and your weight? Yes. Uh, my weight is down. I have lots more energy. And we have millions, millions of African American and Latino individuals who have asthma, diabetes, arthritis, depression, high blood pressure. What's the message for them? Change your diet. Eat more healthy. Uh, stay away from the, the large quantities of meat on your plate. Put more vegetables on your plate. Try to eat as much raw fruits and vegetables as you can. That's the key. So what have we learned from Anne? Anne has taught us that she had asthma, diabetes, when she got rid of the dairy, got rid of the wheat, got rid of the meat. Now she has energy and she doesn't have the mucus. She breathes better. So for her, her doctors were not willing to do this for her, weren't willing to acknowledge there was a connection between diet and disease. She found this out on her own. And that's some lesson for us. We have to go beyond the limitations of medicine when it understands diet and say to ourselves, 
if I eat bread and it turns on an asthmatic attack, if I get rid of bread and it turns it off, isn't there a cause and effect? And if there is, we should honor that. Eugene, yes. what brings you into the juice shop here? Food, <laughs> natural food, good food. Why, what's wrong? People think that food in McDonald's is good food. Well, I'm a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian now for close to 20 years. And I understand that there's not a lot of substance in terms of the processed foods, the, the fat, um, meat in general. So I know that based on what is served here, it's all vegetarian. You look like you're really trim. How old are you? 41. Okay. Um, what kind of work do you do? I work in health insurance. Well, in health insurance, wouldn't it benefit the health insurance companies if Americans started eating this way? Well, it, it actually it would, and it's funny you say that because some of the health insurance companies, at least managed care, their theory is preventive care, where you come in for wellness visits and actually have a more preventive way of looking at your health. Uh, unfortunately, the common thought in medicine is the treatment of acute care, which is once you're sick, okay, you take this medicine, take that medicine. But if managed care and all the components of the health care industry in its, in its entirety, meaning your holistic healers, your natural food organizations that are actually come up with a system or prerequisite for good health, healthy living, healthy eating, then it would fit into what managed care is about because it extends itself outside of the doctor's office, outside of the hospital, and it comes into the home in terms of what your eating habits are, what your living habits are, what your thinking habits are and then managed care or health care as a whole would benefit the individual. But it's not set up that way. Not yet. No, because then hospitals wouldn't have bed capacities and doctors wouldn't have, you know, acute care visits and pharmaceuticals would not be able to expend such money on research and development because there wouldn't be that much illness. So, so good health is bad for medicine. Uh, basically it is. <laughs> basically it Thank is. you for your comments. Hi Robin, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Good, you look like you're in great shape. I'd rather be in better shape though, <laughs> to be honest. What brings you in here? Um, well, considering that I want to be in better shape, I'm on this vigil to eat better and um, try to feel better and um, to kind of detox my body. What advice could you give for so many of the minorities in our society who are overweight and out of shape and are just not aware of the connection? Just for like 30 days or 90 days, give themselves a, just a little chance to see if I were to take two of these three things out of my diet and switch them to vegetables or to fruit, how would I feel? And maybe go to the doctor first and get a physical assessment and then give yourself 30 days to do this after looking over your family's history, maybe just your parents and seeing how they eat and trying to change it slowly. And if in 30 days you don't feel any better and the doctor says there's nothing has changed, then you can go back to eating the way you did. But if there is a slight change, give yourself a chance to live longer and to be healthier. Your skin will change, your attitude upon life will change, your, your weight will change. And you know, and walk. Maybe walk 10 minutes a day first. Nothing extreme. Because extreme measures, I think, don't get us anywhere. Just do it slowly and surely and try to incorporate it slowly and surely into your life. Before, so it's not a, a regimen, it becomes uh, a habitual pleasure. The older adults in my families, they have health complications now. And I, I saw very early on that it's a, re a result of the way that they eat. My father, when I was 15, was told to go on an all-vegetable diet or else he would die because of his heart, he was overweight. And so I said at that time that I don't want that happening to me when I'm 45, 55 years old. So I'm going to start modifying my diet now and it just, it led to me becoming a vegetarian and making sure that I go out of my way to get meals like this. Todd, if you were to share some insights from your years of living a healthy life and being an educator, what would it be? The messages for the adults and for the children. Stay away from processed sugars, candy bars and donuts and you know the little Debbie things that you can buy in the store because that's just fat and it's just not good for you. I'd say definitely stay away from dairy. Um, a lot of African Americans and people of color grow to be lactose intolerant 
and they have sinus problems all along the way and they're coughing all this stuff up you know and it's and headaches and, and it's directly tied to the dairy I found because I was on every type of medication for my allergies and for my sinuses. Some wise individual said maybe you should cut out dairy because some studies are coming out that show that dairy is linked to sinus complications. And when I cut it out, I have been totally free from any type of drug since then. With my students um, in our program, they're falling asleep at 12 noon. They're coming in with coffee, buzzing, and then they're, they're crashing. So I have asked them to commit to giving up their favorite junk food for one month. They give up the McDonald's for a month, and they see that they don't need it. They give up smoking for a month, or try to cut back, and they see that they don't need as many cigarettes. They give up coffee, and they say they don't need it first thing in the morning. And then actually, they have more energy, but by the time I start doing the math and the, you know, the heavy reading and the focus work, than they had when they were on the coffee. It starts with one person, like Todd, as an example of what you can do. And he becomes the teacher. He becomes the inspiration for other people then as they change, they become an inspiration for other people. It's a slow process, but at least it's the beginning, and it's showing us a message that it's not just in the genes. It's in the lifestyle, the rituals of every day, getting used to certain foods, and then thinking those are the foods we should have. show you what I would choose if I were you to, when next time you go into a supermarket. Mind you, you're not going to eat this if you don't buy it. And if you don't know what it is and what it does, you won't buy it. So I'm going to help you. Right off the bat, if you're overweight, you want celery. Celery juice is your most important juice because it's a natural diuretic. It will flow out all those toxins that are stored in your fat. Remember, you don't want to be losing fat that has a lot of pesticides, a lot of chemicals that you've accumulated over the years and over-toxify your liver and your kidneys. This is the great detoxifier. Celery juice, lots of juice, and it helps your body lose that edema, swelling around the calves, the hands, the face, great. Then you've got beets. Beets are good in, in the blood-building nutrients and they provide a sweetness to the juice as well. Now this is something people almost never eat, but you've all heard of it. This is fennel. Now, you can eat the little tiny sprigs of fennel as a mouth freshener, but if you cut the actual fennel, this here, into pieces, bite-sized pieces, and you put it in a salad, it's crunchy and it kind of tastes like licorice, but it's very good for your digestion. One of the best single nutrients you can have for digestion. Fennel for phytochemicals, blood purifying, and good digestion. Now, all these fresh herbs like basil, oregano, thyme, dill, parsley. These are all very powerful bitters. And bitters are good for digestion and for detoxifying. Arugula is considered one of the bitter sweet uh, greens. Great in salads and also you can steam arugula and put it underneath a pasta or underneath a piece of salmon. You can uh, mix it into stir fries. You can garnish a soup or make an arugula salad. Good also for parasites and blood building. Very important arugula. Cabbage, let's say you've got problems with digestion. You have ulcers, you have problems in your gastrointestinal tract. I'd recommend cabbage juice. You have red cabbage, you have, uh, you have the uh, traditional cabbage. That would make you one whole cabbage this size would make you approximately one glass of cabbage juice. Now, if you mix cabbage and celery together, perfect detoxifying of the system. Parsley, chives, very good. Ah, Swiss chard. Stir fry Swiss chard with shiitake mushrooms, garlic, cayenne pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. Delicious as a side dish. Uh, then we have kale. Kale and, and Swiss chard can be juiced also. Uh, we have broccoli. Broccoli is being studied now for its anti-cancer properties. It is part of the cruciferous family. Cruciferous comes from the term that there's all these little sprigs that are in the form of like crosses, like cauliflower, broccoli. That, that makes it cruciferous, but if you want to help prevent many conditions, you must have the cruciferous vegetables, and this is good for you. Uh, asparagus. Now, 
The Japanese, Chinese, and the Thais, the Vietnamese have used mushrooms throughout the millennium. Shiitake, Rishi, Maitake mushroom are known to have anti cancer properties. They're also very tasty. They have immune stimulating properties. So if you want to build your immune system up, help fortify your system against disease, mushrooms. Now you can use mushrooms raw. You can use mushrooms sauteed. Then we have lettuces, all types of lettuce, like chicory lettuce, which is a bitter, very good for digestion. And you have spinach. Of course, spinach builds blood. And this is the old fashioned lettuce. This is just an iceberg lettuce. If all the things in the supermarket I'd tell you not to eat, it would be iceberg lettuce. Everything else has more nutrients. Now over here we have some of the tubers. We have squash, parsnips. We don't have enough parsnips and squash. Uh, and then you can get this kind of garlic now. They've taken the work out of peeling and pressing the garlic. Garlic and everything. Garlic lowers blood pressure. It's antiparasitic. It's antiviral. It lowers cholesterol levels. It's a blood purifier. It's the ultimate detoxifier. I'm here in New York City. We have a lot of pollution, a lot of noise, and having a juice each day. And I have watermelon, lemon, lime, all together, and that's great as a great detoxifier. Then we have a food that's misunderstood. It's the avocado. Avocados, yes, they have some calories, but they're healthy calories because the fats are healthy. This is not going to make you fat. In the fact, eating avocado in a healthy diet will actually allow you to lose weight. It's what people put on avocados that really is not healthy, but avocados have the kind of oils that help your skin, help your hair, help your nails, help your immune system. So avocados are good. And of course, one of the most important foods in all of nature is the lemon. The bioflavonoids, which are healing nutrients, are under the skin, the white pulp. Now the seed of the lemon has a bitter in it and it's like a caprylic acid and it's great for parasites and candida and the yeast that builds up in your intestine because you've had too much sugar and meat. Well, this cleanses that intestine, the great intestinal cleanser and blood purifier, lemons. When you flood the body each day with your nine servings of fresh fruits and vegetables and you use variety all year round using different ones and you juice these, then you're giving the body the real enzymes, the catalysts of life, the spark plugs for energy, fiber, 40 to 50 grams a day, the different colors are the chlorophylls, the phytochemicals, the antioxidants, and the trace elements. The full spectrum of what we need to prevent disease in the first case and to maximize wellness in the second. It's not difficult to eat right, but you got to start here making the right selection. Go to the grocery store, go to the farmer's market, and buy organic foods. Buy the best quality foods that you can. There's a thriving movement of farmer's markets throughout the country where you can easily buy organic and locally grown food. What's your name? David Ray. David, what do you do, David? I'm an artist. You're an okay. artist? All right. Mm -hmm. How important is health to you? It's absolutely important. It's right. everything. It is everything? everything? Have you ever been sick? Yes, I have. All right. What kind of illnesses have you had? Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, what do you do now as far as taking care of your health? Well, <laughs> I watch my diet very carefully. All right. I drink juices every day. What kind of juices do you drink? Uh, vegetable. Vegetable? vegetable fresh fruits. vegetable? Yes, fresh vegetable. All right. Vegetable. Take supplements? Yes, I do. Yes, Good. I do. Have you gotten off meat or dairy or no sugar? No meat. No red meat. No. Oh, so no. you, you're going vegetarian? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. good luck. Little Thank chicken. you very much. So okay. health is important. Absolutely. Peace of mind is important. Absolutely. All right. Have you learned some lessons, what you might have thought might have contributed to your cancer? Very much so. Yeah. What do you think might yeah. have contributed to your prostate cancer? In my case, emotional problems. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Lots of stress? Absolutely. Absolutely. So dealing with stress appropriately on a day-to-day -day level is important in preventing that cancer? Very much so. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's see who else is out here on the streets. I'm just selecting people as they randomly walk by. Hi, what do you do? I'm a school teacher. School teacher. How important is health? I think health is uh, very important uh, as far as um, I'm concerned, as far as our children are concerned. Uh, as you know that um, most people cannot afford health insurance, uh, and um, I feel that we need to uh, establish a good care for our, ourselves as well as for others. So you're working with children to try to prevent diseases in the first place? Yes, I am. Have you seen some of the problems with overweight children and hyperactive children due to their diets? Yes. Um, well, first of all, you know, with the stores around surrounding the schools, they constantly sell, of course, the candies and the sweets and stuff that they eat basically for breakfast before they come to school and throughout the day. So um, it's important for the, uh, the school the schools implement a, a program, lunch, breakfast and lunch program, that will help the, the students, not the lunches that they have now. So what do you do for yourself for health? Um, actually, I, well, I do a lot of walking, drinking Power water. Walking. Yes. Water, walking, water, and drinking, and um, healthy foods every once in a while. <laughs> good. All right. So you feel better? I'm much better. Yes. I'm in very good shape. Well, thank you. I appreciate thank you, you stopping, saying hello. Again, school teacher interested in the health of the children. Um, a busy New Yorker. Let's see who else is interested in health. Hi. Hi. Excuse me. What's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer, how are Hi. you? I'm okay. How are you? Jennifer, how important is health to you? Uh, it's become very important. It does. Yeah. How old are you? I'm um, 20. I just turned 26. Okay. Now most women 26 years old, uh, their their physique is important, and how they look is important, okay. but generally not nutrition. Is nutrition important to you? Yes. All right. Um, I definitely watch what I eat and try and get my fruits and vegetables. Um, but I'm lacking a little bit in exercise, which I need to do more of. What are some of the foods you would say you won't eat now that you once didn't have a second thought about eating? Um, I've given up dairy, um, cut back on sugar, and given up meat. I'm a vegetarian. Yours is a lifestyle change, not just a dietary change. Right. So you're looking at this more holistically? Yep. yep. And they're just looking at it, what do I have to do to look better physically? Right, right. The shortcut approach? Yep, like most people. <laughs> so shortcuts don't work, do they? I don't think so. Not for me, anyway. Thank you, I appreciate right. you talking Thank to me. Thank you. Right. When we consider how many other New Yorkers, how many people in general, are looking for the shortcut, the quick fix, then we understand why we just don't have the success with our health. Time after time, almost every person we've stopped and interviewed has said, yes, health is important, right up at the top of their list. But then ask, most are not going enough to make it a reality. And you can't just do a diet or exercise or vitamins. You have to do it all. That's the key. How important is health to you? Second most important thing. Good. And what do you do to keep yourself healthy? I work out regularly. I try to eat healthily. And I try to keep a positive um, mindset. Oh, all right. So you're trying to look more of a holistic approach to it? Right. How did you get that way? What motivated you? Um, I guess it's natural. Um, I'm a spiritual person and I try to keep all parts of myself in a higher place. So physically I have to keep myself in a higher place. Mentally I have to, it goes hand in hand. If I don't feel good physically, I can't do what I have to do mentally or spiritually. So I found that it goes hand in hand, all three, emotional, physical, spiritual, mental. Good for you. Nice to meet Thank you, Mike. You. Thank you. That's something we don't hear many New Yorkers talking about, the spiritual association with health. And of course, if we're really realistic, how could we not include the spirit, the sense of self, the meaning and purpose of our life, the reason why we're alive, into our planning each day? What kind of work do you do, Robin? Yoga teacher. Okay. How important is health to you? It's my life's work. All right. What do you do to keep yourself healthy besides yoga? Uh, eat well and uh, think good thoughts. Positive thoughts. Positive, positive thoughts. Positive thoughts. Right. Do you share that? Do you find most of the people doing yoga today are interested in in a total approach to health? No. They Some don't. Some people just on the physical level, not on the spiritual and emotional and life energy level.
Do you think it's more that a busy New Yorker would only want to take one tiny part of health in instead of a whole approach? Do you think it's more unique here than well, Boulder, Colorado, we're, we're or in Denver? We're a culture that kind of likes to pop a pill, the easy way out, you know, not really take make the life adjustment that's needed, which is a commitment and dedication to a whole holistic way of life, just not one hour and a half. So we come from a culture that really doesn't promote, you know, making health a priority. If I can show people that if they just eat good, they'll feel better, right. but they're not going to really lose the weight. If they exercise, they'll lose the weight and right. feel better. Right. If they cleanse and detoxify, right. allergies, immune dysfunction, right. arthritis, right. fibromyalgia are Absolutely. going to go away. Absolutely. And we're trying to show okay. people that there are at least seven steps to health. Diet, detoxification, stress management, exercise, cleaning their home and work environment, making no more excuses, then elimination, get rid of the toxins. People are willing to one or another. I'm right. saying do it all, right. and when you do it all, not only will you feel better, but you're going to reverse the aging process. There was a time not long ago where if you said, would you like a fresh glass of mixed vegetables, people go, yuck, no, why should I? Well, now they know that the phytochemicals, antioxidants, trace minerals can help rejuvenate, revitalize, detoxify our entire system. In fact, one of the very first things we must do if we're going to cleanse and detoxify our system is to understand that when you drink coffee in the morning, not good. It's a diuretic, imbalances our hormones. This balances. This stimulates natural hormone production. This does a deep cell cleansing, especially in the intestine. In Europe and throughout the world where they do colon hydrotherapy, where they actually clean the colon on a regular basis, they suffer far less of the diseases like diverticulitis, spastic colon, cancer of the colon than we do. We eat a lot of foods that have no fiber. Almost all your processed carbohydrates are deficient in fiber. Meat, chicken, dairy has no fiber. Now we should have about 50 grams of high quality fiber each day in our diet. We don't. So there's two things we can do. Buy all this kind of great stuff. This is the stuff that has fiber and good fiber. Celery, cucumbers, carrots, apples. By the way, the fiber in an apple skin is terrific for you. It's a great de detoxifier. An apple a day helps keep the bacteria out of your intestine, cancer causing bacteria out of the intestine. Also grapes. Now, the grape skin and the grape seed have what are called proanthocyanidins. That detoxifies, helps with the antioxidants in your blood, helps prevent cancer and heart disease. So grapes are one of nature's most perfect healing, detoxifying, rejuvenating foods. Even to take a whole bunch of grapes and make a grape juice each day. And also the greens like kale, parsley, wheatgrass. This is the mother load of cleansers. When you eat celery, this celery here has ligocellulose. You open it up, see this, all this? Every time you do this, you're going to get strips and strips of this ligocellulose. That's not digestible. Only about anywhere from 8 to 20 percent of the nutrients in any vegetable can actually get into your system for a simple reason. The cellulose traps in the nutrients. Now that's good as far as cleaning the intestine but it's not good about getting the nutrients that we want in our blood to protect our cells in there. and gives us energy, by the way. Super energize your system with vegetables. So what you do is you juice this. When you juice this, you end up with this. If you drank two glasses of fresh, organic mixed vegetable juice a day, A, forget constipation, forget diverticulitis, colon rectal cancer, forget autotoxemia and many allergies. You're gonna super build the immune system because the chlorophyll does it. You can't eat four pounds. You wouldn't want to eat four pounds. Your jaw would drop off. You go numb in, the, uh, numb in the teeth trying to chew that much celery. So eat your vegetables, yes, but drink your vegetables better. This on a scale of one to a hundred is a 10. This is a hundred. So if you've been a coffee drinker, a smoker, if you've eaten meat and sugar, if you've worked around pollutants, then you have prematurely aged your DNA. What can we do about that prematurely aged DNA? We can reverse it. Yes, we can. You don't have to wait to genetic engineering to support. You can do your own genetic engineering. 
because of the phytochemicals in fruits, mainly watermelon, oranges, yes, oranges, very important, but in the skin and seed, that's why you juice the whole thing. Raspberries, cherries, blueberries, powerful detox fiber for your intestinal blueberries, helps your eyes. You want the juices from the berries. Now you can go anytime, 12 months a year, go to your health food store, get the frozen foods like cherries, juice the cherries. And you can make a mixed juice. Watermelon juice, number one single detoxifying juice. Number one, above all. Watermelon, lemon, and lime. Pears help overcome constipation, help lower blood pressure. Limes and lemons have a particular skin phytochemical that helps reverse and prevent cancer, especially in the intestine. In the, in the grapefruit, there is the seed. The seed, if you've ever eaten into a grapefruit seed, it's very bitter. It has what is known as caprylic acid. Caprylic acid kills yeast in the intestine. Now, how many of you have yeast in your intestine? And you know what happens when you have that yeast overgrowth. It's very bad for you. You get fatigued. Uh, it, it gets very dischargy. This helps prevent that. This kills those yeast. Candida albicans is killed by the caprylic acid in the grapefruit seed. So when you're juicing your grapefruit, you're juicing the whole, the skin, the pulp, the whole thing. Most people don't realize that with grapefruits, the white inside pulp, this right here, that has bioflavonoids in it. And the bioflavonoids help you to prevent bruising, stimulate your immune system, and especially men and women who have little tiny uh, spider veins. That's terrific for them. The flesh is actually the least nutrient part, and what's really important is the seeds. The seeds have caprylic acid. Cauliflower has anti-cancer agents. Steam the cauliflower. Don't eat raw cauliflower, broccoli, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, because you can't digest it. It'll all go right through your system. Eat steamed, all right, or cooked cauliflower. It liberates the phytochemicals, making it more digestible. Yellow, red, and purple sweet peppers have almost as much vitamin C as an orange, but they also have great nutrients for lowering blood pressure and healing the body, stimulating the immune system. Peppers are great for you, and juicing them, terrific. Gives a nice sweetness to the juice. If there was one single root vegetable that more than any other helps you with deep cell cleansing inside the intestine, it's ginger. Ginger can help stop nausea, it can help you if you have traveler sickness. It can help you if you have an upset stomach. And it's particularly good if you have digestive disorders. You would juice maybe just that much. Little piece, like a one inch piece of ginger. Ginger and a juice. Now, of course, the one thing that we should really have for the best of the best, the number one on my detoxifying of the intestine and body, garlic. Raw garlic kills a whole spectrum of bacteria. We're at a time when we all want to be more supercharged in our immune system. So if we do come into contact with one of the biological agents, we'll be better able to live through it. Garlic, onion, ginger, cayenne, these are the things that stimulate natural healing. A green juice a day keeps the doctor away. A red juice each day, like watermelon and berry, that rejuvenates. Both together, totally cleanse and detoxify. But then you say, okay, Gary, I don't have time I don't even have a juice extractor. What do I do? All right, there are answers. You too can also benefit by cleansing and detoxifying by buying one of the products that are out there that are green or red products. What these are, these are powders made from drying of the fruits and vegetables. In a perfect world, that we would all each day throw a scoop of a powder into a glass of liquid and drink it down and that would give us flood our body with phytochemicals and nutrients. So first eat your vegetables, then juice, and then if you can't do either of those, take a powder and that really supplements. I think it's very important that you only purchase organic produce. And if enough people begin to demand that they don't want their produce to be genetically engineered, and that they don't want all types of pesticides that many people suspect could cause carcinogenic activity in our bodies, and there are some that are known to be carcinogenic, 
and no pesticide is good for you. So I think we've gone beyond the whole idea that we're not worth it. Why should there always be a risk-benefit ratio? The risk to the American consumer, the benefit to the manufacturer. If anything, I believe that we should say, hey, we come first. I don't want my child, your child, or any other child to have to have these in the body when the immune system is developing because this could set the stage for diseases later. And how many times have we ended up being right? And a hundred times. We were right on DDT, we were right on Aldrin, we were right on Hepsipor, all these different conditions we were right on. These are pesticides that we do not need in our body. We don't need them in our water. So when you go into your store and you say, could you start carrying some organic produce? If enough people do, they will. And look at the variety of organic produce. But you want to juice the succulent fruits and the, the more water-containing vegetables, uh, like peppers, cucumbers, celery, uh, those have a lot of water. And of course, oranges, uh, grapefruit, lemons, limes, great for cleansing and detoxifying the intestine, berries. It, it helps detoxify the intestine, it purifies the blood, it helps the brain, the eye, the vision. It's just so good with all the phytochemicals. Apples, apples have over 150 different phytochemicals, healing chemicals, the melon family. Cassava, melons are very good, watermelon's excellent, uh, cantaloupe is good. Try all the different melons. We're used to eating them, that's good. Juice them, you get more digestion and you get more of it into your system. Pineapple, mango, uh, papaya, banana. You can juice it, then blend it. So when people say, Gary, why do I only eat one meal a day? And I keep my weight at 182 pounds and uh, uh, still keep a 20 inch waist, 3.5% body fat. Of course, I exercise vigorously. I'm a competitive athlete, but I keep my energy up. I'm able to work all the hours I do. I'm generally going 20 to 22 hours every single day because I have one major meal a day, but then I have my juices. I'll have uh, maybe five or six juices in a day. Now, you don't start with five or six juices. You start with one, one juice per day per month. That means that each month you add one more juice in. It could be an extra fruit juice if you're not diabetic or hypoglycemic. It can be vegetable juices. Remember, the vegetable juices cleanse and detoxify. The fruit juices energize and rebuild. They help cleanse and purify. They rebuild. They rejuvenate. They kickstart the enzyme systems, the big catalysts of life. They help us get the quality soft fibers in. They allow nutrients that can help protect our eyes and brains from premature aging. They give us the antioxidants that we need also to protect us from free radicals, one of the primary reasons we develop disease. We want to make sure it's organic. We do not want genetically engineered. There's no study showing the long-term effects of eating an apple has been genetically engineered. So take your time. Don't rush it. Start with one juice per month and then increase it up to four juices a day. Dilute the juices with water. Decide which juices you like best and then play with it. You can have fun with juices. Don't be afraid to experiment, all right? That's what it's about. Having fun with fruits and vegetables, all right? Now let's take a look and see how some juices are made. Anytime you juice, make sure that you thoroughly wash all the fruits and vegetables. There are vegetable washers you can get where you just spray it on there and rinse it off, or you can make your own with some. Uh, you can take some apple cider vinegar, like two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, to a quart of water, and then you agitate it. It's the agitation where you're kind of shaking it around. That causes to de-exfoliate all the bacteria, viruses, uh, molds that are on all produce. You have to agitate. Then you rinse it, then it's ready to do. Now, a couple, couple suggestions. First, you want to start by not over juicing. You don't want to make it uh, too overwhelming to the system. No two people can tolerate the same amount of juice. For example, if you just started juicing carrots like this, carrots are good. They have a lot of the carotenoids in them, but they've been overstated. And that's simply because one of the first things ever juiced were carrots. So then everybody thought, oh, let's make carrots the big deal. Carrots shouldn't be the big deal because there's so much sugar in a carrot that it's right at the top of the list, right with sugar, and over-raising your blood sugar level. It has what's high, a high glycemic index. The glycemic means how much 
sugar is going into the bloodstream right away. The cucumber, now it has a lot of juice, which is good, so you could have more uh, cucumber juice than you could a carrot juice, because it's not going to raise the blood sugar level. Now, there's a rationale to, to juicing. First, I've discovered that the green juices, like parsley, kale, broccoli, arugula, these are good for cleansing and detoxifying. Our livers do two primary things. Our livers take toxins out of the body, and our liver metabolizes nutrients to be used in the body. If you have overstressed your liver with environmental pollutants, industrial pollutants, caffeine, sugar, meat, alcohol, artificial sweeteners, all those over time can play havoc with your liver, causing the liver not to be able to do its job right then you need to cleanse the liver. So I have a special liver cleansing tonic. It's really good. And I have one liver cleanse that's vegetable and one that's fruit. First, the vegetable. I'm gonna just point out some vegetables here. We have Swiss chard, kale, broccoli, parsley, mustard greens. By the way, mustard greens is a small amount. It's very strong and you have to be careful. Dilute your green juices, always dilute them because otherwise you could take a glass of green juice and it wouldn't settle in your stomach. It, it would be too much trauma to the stomach. So when you have people say, well, I tried vegetable juice, but it didn't agree with me. That meant that they had too strong diluted. Let's take two ounces of green juice and maybe 10 ounces of cucumber juice or apple or even spring water is good. But then gradually you can increase the amount of the actual juice. Almost everyone on my health programs are getting better when they are because of the amount of vegetables and fruits going in their system. Now, I, no one's going to eat a whole quart of blueberries, but you could easily juice a quart of blueberries. And when you juice the quart of blueberries, that creates a very soft, very soft pectinate in your intestine. And the blueberry helps your eyes. It helps improve vision. The enzymes and the special chemicals in here, special nutrients, help with the brain helps fight cancer. So fruits and vegetables are to help compensate for the pollution in our environment. They're phenomenal for you. You take enough to get yourself a nice ice juice and you juice them. And now you have what would be equivalent to about maybe four pounds of juice. That stimulates the liver to release toxins, helps your intestine move to breathe through. Remember, in the average intestine, you could have anywhere from a pound to as much as 10, 12 pounds of bacteria, uh, dead cells and undigested fibers. That's toxic. You don't want that. And that diverts the immune system. Anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of your immune system is in your intestine. It has to be there because of how toxic your intestine is. Well, the immune system is primarily here and here in the intestine and the mouth. What about the immune system for the rest of your body, for cancer and for viruses and bacteria and microbes? It doesn't have it. Hence, you become susceptible to regular infections, like joint infections that can manifest as arthritis, or lung infections. So to keep having these chronic infections that millions of Americans have, you've got to, in effect, free up the immune system. The berry cocktail, make one juice in the morning, and then dilute the rest with mineral water or spring water till you get a full, let's say 12, 16 ounces. Drink that down slowly, take some vitamin C with it, and it gives you a great purge. It cleanses you gently and creates a nice soft fiber, floods the body with healing phytochemicals, enzymes, antioxidants, terrific for you. Now, one of the best standbys is the apple. Apples have their nourishment in their skin. Not only is it in the skin, but the phytochemicals are in the skin. So by juicing apples, it's good for you. Uh, also, I have what's called the great blood cleanser. I take a lemon, a lime, grapefruit, oranges. All right, lemon, lime, grapefruit, oranges, and juice that and have that once a day as well. If it's a little tart for you, put in some raw honey. Raw honey because honey is a, a real food, a live food, and uh, it's, it's a healing food. So, and also you can use other fruits like kiwis, skin and all, juice the kiwi. Have a kiwi spritzer. And so you make watermelon, kiwi, lemon and lime, throw it into a blender after you juiced it with some ice, crush it up and you've got a terrific uh, summer cooler. Like if I want a protein drink, I can add a scoop of protein powder from rice protein or soy protein, throw in a banana, some apple juice, 
and I'm set to go. That'll last me for about four hours. I can also throw in some walnuts, some almonds to get some sensor fatty acids. You don't need enough sea vegetables, so I'll throw in some sea veggies, uh, some greens, and uh, cucumbers, celery. So it's so easy to make this stuff. If you have high blood pressure, if you have elevated cholesterol, and you're concerned as a part of, not exclusive, but a part of your overall program to lower your cholesterol and blood pressure, or if you have parasites, garlic. Do ginger with the garlic and do some onions with it. But you're gonna have to dilute it because it's really strong on the stomach. And if you don't dilute it, it can upset the stomach. Or if you have a sore throat, gargle with it. If you have congestion, do that twice a day. Now, if you add vitamin C, like a quarter teaspoon to a glass of juice or a quart of juice, you can make all your juices in the morning. You can make a gallon of juice. Add some vitamin C or the juice of two lemons, and as long as you keep it refrigerated, it'll be fresh for 24 hours. There are all kinds of myths about juicing, and one of them is that if you don't drink your juice within a matter of eight minutes, it's no longer any good. That's all nonsense. All those myths are nonsense. The antioxidants, the phytochemicals, the chlorophyll, the healing enzymes will stay as long as it's refrigerated for about a, uh, at least a day. And the vitamin C or the lemon juice acts as natural preservatives. So this is, with, for, this is one of the protocols to help you overall for blood pressure, cholesterol, parasites. And by the way, ginger, ginger with aloe vera, take some regular aloe vera juice out of a bottle, never just juice aloe vera. No, because it's got alanin, which could cause diarrhea and upset stomach. So you take uh, aloe vera, put it into a blender, put uh, one or two pieces of ginger, and it helps with upset stomach, nausea, and uh, diarrhea. It also is good for the intestines, the intestinal cleanse. Now, celery like cucumber, is, it helps as a natural diuretic. Let's say you're holding water. You're holding water in your ankles. You're holding water in your face. The juices, the phytochemicals from the cucumber help as a natural diuretic, help the body get rid of this extra liquid. It also is rich in the chlorophyll that is good blood cleanser. So if you want a good blood purifier, you use celery, cucumber, and apple. The three combination, that's a good combination. Now then you can have fun. You can use things you would never think about juicing, like uh, mango and papaya and guava. You can do a whole exotic fruit smoothie. For instance, you would peel this, scrape it, juice it. Juice it with kiwi, passion fruit, mango, and pineapple. Throw in some cinnamon. And then you could blend that with some rice milk or soy milk uh, or apple juice to make yourself a big smoothie. Now, if you throw in a scoop of protein powder, it's not just a smoothie for energy, uh, for your enzymes, for health, but the protein is a whole meal. And two scoops of protein in a juice is about 50 grams of protein of high quality, usable protein. That's equivalent to an entire steak. That's equivalent to six eggs. That's equivalent to almost a, a whole chicken. Because when you eat normal protein, only a percentage of that protein is actually digested and absorbed. But when you have a protein powder with branched amino acids, it's all absorbed, goes right into the bloodstream. And by the way, some people cannot combine fruits and vegetables in the same juice. It'll upset their stomach. If you have a good, strong digestion, you can do it. Test yourself. Everything here is going to be tested. Remember, the fruits help repair tissue. They help overcome damage. The vegetables are the great cleansers and detoxifiers. Now, you can go to my book called The Joy of Juicing. You can also go to the Ultimate Lifetime Diet, and you'll find all kinds of great recipes in there. Those recipes are meant to allow the body a chance to start all over. So I've taken people whose bodies have really been racked. I mean, they just they haven't paid attention to them. I mean, they, they have been let's say smoking, drinking, drugs, even if they gave that up 20 years ago. The damage done 20 years ago is still in their system. So we want to repair that damage, and that's what this will do. And then enjoy it. And what's nice is when you make yourself a nice juice and then put it into a, a wine glass and serve it, it just has a whole ambiance to it. And you feel good because you're taking in something you're becoming. You are what you eat, you are what you drink, you are what you think. So don't take anything toxic in. Take things in that you don't mind becoming. And you're becoming the fruits and vegetables. And that's, that's what this is all about. Mark my words.
there's going to come a turning point in the next one, two, or three years where baby boomers, people my age, who were born after the Second World War, and who worked on our careers, worked on our education, did the family thing, we've done all that, all right? Now it's time for us. It's time to wake up one morning and say, this is my day. I'm going to enjoy this day. I'm not going to have a to-do list. I'm my to-do list. And it's going to start with my health. By working on my health, I'm going to do this all I can for my body, mind, and spirit. And then you're going to say, gee, why would I want to have coffee when I can have a great tasting juice? And then you're going to have fun. You're going to use that great imagination of yours to come up with all kinds of recipes. So enjoy it.